Hi, Shawan. Hi, Martin. Many of my Cloud Run apps are for company internal users only, and I wish there was an easier way to set that up. And how do you handle that today? Well, my users must VPN to the virtual private cloud first, and then they can log in again to the applications. And there's no central place to manage fine-grained access. Ah, there is a better way with Identity Aware Proxy. By using a zero trust approach, there's no need for a VPN. It also gives you centralized access control across all of your applications. Xiaowen, you are a products manager for Cloud Run, focusing on networking and security, right? Yes. And as a product manager, I hear from customers who want to simplify authentication for company internal Cloud Run applications. And that's where Identity Aware Proxy comes in? That's right. Identity Aware Proxy, or IAP for short, is a product in Google Cloud that you can put in front of other applications. It only lets in users that are on its approved list. Sounds good. And that means security admins can control access to apps in one centralized place. And also, they don't need to maintain a VPN anymore. And app developers can focus more on business logic as IAP handles authentication. Their code simply needs to check a header in each incoming request. This means fewer lines of code and a lower chance of errors due to bugs or oversights. Right. Uh, I've used IAP to manage access to my web apps on App Engine. Yes. And we recently launched Cloud Run integration to general availability. So now IAP can control access to your Cloud Run applications as well as App Engine, Compute Engine, and Kubernetes Engine. Nice. Uh, can you show us how it works? Sure. Here is the centralized control panel where a security admin can manage access provided by IAP. You can see all the applications in this project here. This is an ERP system that runs on a Kubernetes cluster. This is a cloud run service that runs my financials. And this is an intranet front end that runs on a virtual machine. And this is a public website that's hosted on App Engine. And the public website is open to the public? Yes, it is. I turned off IAP for it. All other applications are locked down. My internet website is open to everyone, which is a group I created that includes everyone with an email in my domain. But the financial system should perhaps only be open to the finance team? Yes, exactly. If I click the application, go to the info panel, we see that only the finance team has access. Right. And when I try to hit your finance application, I get this login prompt. And you gave me an account in your domain before, martin.chawanex.com. So I'll try to log in with that account. Ah, oh, and access is denied. Great. Now, let's say that you need temporary access for a few weeks. I can grant you access directly from the info panel. So click on Add Principle and enter your account and grant you the IAP secured web app user role. So you can grant access to groups or to individual users. That's right. All right, uh, let's give the permissions a minute to propagate. And uh, I'll go to your finance application again. Ah, and now I have access. Oh, uh, it shows my account name there. How does the app know? Great question. What's happening here is that IAP adds some headers to the HTTP requests. This is the most important one. Let's have a closer look. I temporarily updated my application to print out the value of that header to the logs, just for our demo today. For security reasons, I wouldn't do this in production. So let me open the logs and find one of those log statements. Here's one. I will copy the value. The header name contains JWT. Is it a JSON web token? Yes, that's right. If I decode it at JWT.io, we see that it contains the email and user ID. 
So your Cloud Run service has code that extracts the user ID and email from each incoming request? Yes, and here it is. This is the source code that ensures that Google signed the JWT. So you know it was Google who sent the request and not somebody else. Yes, exactly. And to be doubly safe, the validation also checks that the request is for this Cloud Run service. This audience parameter identifies a load balancer backend, which in this case is my Cloud Run service. And where did you find that audience string? Here. It's here in IAP under the dots menu. Mm, very good. Uh, looks like a useful code snippet. I will include a link to it from the video description. OK, I also want centralized access control for my applications. So I have a project here with the Cloud Run service that is a corporate directory. And it should only be visible to people with accounts in my domain. Uh, but right now it's public. So I've already set up a load balancer with a custom domain. Nice. Show me what you've done. So it was pretty easy to create a load balancer and add the custom domain to my Cloud Run service. I just clicked my Cloud Run service. I clicked the integrations tab. I picked the custom domain integration and filled out and submitted the form. So it took a while. Uh, now that is all done, it looks like this. And then I updated the settings at my DNS hosting service with this IP address here. And my domain name now leads to my Cloud Run service like so. And I can also access the service through the run.app URL that Cloud Run created, like this. Looks good. So this is your current setup. And as you showed, there are two paths to your Cloud Run service, and neither of them is authenticated. And I want to force users to go via IIP, where I can set who has access and who doesn't, right? Right. That is where you want to be. An anonymous internet user will no longer be able to reach your Cloud Run service directly. Users will have to go through your custom domain and your load balancer, and they will have to authenticate with IAP before accessing your service. OK, it uh, looks like I need to change a few different things. Yes, here is your to-do list. First, configure IAP. Then, number two, Grant your users access to IAP. Then number three, allow only IAP to invoke your Cloud Run service. After that, number four, deny anonymous users from invoking your service by requiring authentication. And finally, number five, deny external access to the run.app URL for your service. So the only entry points will be through the external load balancer using your custom domain name. OK, let's do the first item, which is to configure IAP. All right, uh, I'll go to security and then identity aware, aware proxy. I'll enable identity aware proxy. We'll give it time to turn on. Now I'll go to IAP. Uh, looks like uh, I need to configure a consent screen. Right. This is the OAuth consent screen that will be displayed to your users on the login screen. Click the button to configure it. You will only authenticate internal users, so you will not need to submit your application for review. Now fill in the required fields, and you can always come back later and fill in the rest. OK, I'm filling out the required fields. I click Save and Continue. I don't believe I need additional OAuth scopes. Uh, I don't want to access users' uh, spreadsheets, calendars, or anything like that. I just want to give internal users access to this Cloud Run service. Sounds good. Now, go back to IAP. You will see your Cloud Run service name there. Turn on IAP for it. OK, I will check the checkbox and click Turn On. Looks like it's done. Great. Let's just give it a few moments for all the changes to propagate on the back end. Then open an incognito window and go to your domain. All right, doing so now. Aha, there's the login page. Very good. Now let's go to step number two, which is granting some users access to your corporate directory app. Go back to IAP and check the checkbox for your service. Right. 
uh, I click add principal like you did before. Uh, then I enter my admin account. Uh, I also enter user in my domain, Alice. Then I give myself and Alice the role IAP, secured web app user. Done. Great. And you can also get access to groups. That's easier if you have many users. I use Google as my identity provider. So I create the groups at admin.google.com. Also, look here. I created an everyone group. It includes all the users in the organization. The docs describe how to set that up. Now you're done with to do item number two. In item number three, you will grant access to IAP so that it can invoke your Cloud Run service. The documentation page for using IAP with Cloud Run shows the service account that you should grant access to. Right, uh, I see the account name here. I'll copy it. Uh, looks like I need the project number. I'll go to the project overview page to get that. And then I put that in the account name. I copy the account name so I can give it access to invoke my Cloud Run service. Then I go to Cloud Run and pick my service. Then I click Add Principal. I paste in the IAP account. I have my copy buffer. And then I give it Cloud Run Invoker role. Done. Now it's time for item number four. Deny anonymous users from invoking your service by requiring authentication. That's under the security tab. Okay, I click the security tab for my Cloud Run service. Uh, and I change it to require authentication. And there, it's done. Uh, so will this change display that login screen for my users? Not quite. IAP will display the login screen. This option, require authentication, means that only authenticated requests from other services can trigger the Cloud Run service. In our case, users will authenticate to IAP and IAP will authenticate to Cloud Run. And now you've done four out of five to-do items, Martin. <laughs> I wish all my to-do lists were that easy. Me too. And your last to-do is number five, deny external access to the run.app URL. You do that from the networking tab on your Cloud Run service. Okay, uh, I click my Cloud Run service here. I click the networking tab. And here I set it to internal access and I allow traffic from the load balancer. Done. Great. Now open an incognito browser window and see if everything works. All right, here we go. Uh, first, I'll make sure that the run.app URL for my Cloud Run service has been blocked. I'll enter it here. Very good. That URL does not lead to the Cloud Run service anymore. Then I'll uh, go to my custom URL, uh, which should work. There's a login page. Good. I'll enter my credentials for admin at my domain. And I'm in. It worked. Congrats! You have completed all of your to-do items and your IAP setup is complete. Only the users you grant access to in IAP will be able to access your company internal web app. All right, Shawan, this looks great. Uh, but what if an organization keeps its user list in Active Directory? Can they still use IAP? Yes. If your users are in Active Directory and they're using Google Cloud, you may want to use Google Cloud Directory Sync to synchronize your Google users and groups to match the information in your Active Directory or LDAP server. That way, you can use IAP and other identity-aware products in Google Cloud. Nice. Uh, so let's recap, Shawan. What are the takeaways? Sure. Our top takeaway is that you can use IAP as a central place to secure all of your Google Cloud applications hosted on Cloud Run, App Engine, Compute Engine, and Kubernetes Engine. And what's next for anyone who wants to try out IP in their project? Set it up today. This basic version of IP is free. All you have to do is pay for the load balancer. If you want to upgrade your security even more, check out Beyond Corp Enterprise. Beyond Corp Enterprise is Google's zero trust solution that provides full context aware access, including user and device context, and has integrated threat and data protection 
to protect your users from unsafe activity. Thank you for joining me today, Shawan. Thanks for having me, Martin. And thank you, everyone, for watching. If you have questions for Shawan or me, please add them in the comments below. Also, let me know if there are any other serverless topics you'd like to see in future episodes. I read every single comment. Until next time.